Okay, now I have modified my um, Meet ETX uh, uh, 125 to accept. This is a 12-inch Dobsonian uh, telescope made by Skywatcher, and as you can see, it's quite large. But this is not the whole length of it. When you extend, the length of it will increase to 150. At the moment, it's just around. Yeah, the height is around one meter ten. Let's extend it and see how it is. This is a Skywatcher telescope. Uh, it's 30 centimeter, 300 p, or 12 inch. The mirror uh, has been left for a while, so it's quite uh, dusty. I'm getting it to clean it, and uh, yeah, I will. I have marked this part here which is to the, that side is the eyepiece, to the right of the eyepiece beam. So this is the mark I've left here. And I'm now going to open it by removing these screws from here. Let's do it. For removing the screws, I'm careful. I hold the tip of this with my hand. Um, and with the other hand, uh, I turn the screwdriver. So the tip of the screwdriver is in my hand. I'm careful that it doesn't scratch anywhere else. Okay, as I'm um, removing the mirror to clean, you can see our chickens, which are astronomers, who are astronomers, have gathered around us to help me, probably, you know, finding the screws if I lose them. Sky Watcher and Chicken Whisperer. Now removed all the six screws and I'm ready to separate the mirror. Before that I will put a towel around under it so I can just collect it like that safely hopefully. I put the, all the screws in this side bag of this rucksack so they are safe. I take now the uh, towels out. Our chickens very curious about uh, what happens next and I'm sure they're curious to see how it will happen. Look, she has gone near the eyepiece. Oh, oh yeah, go for the eyepiece. Go. Go baby, I know you're astronomer. You like cosmology. The moment of the truth, the whole mirror has came off. As you can see, the mirror has lots of dust on it. It was laying on the somewhere and a little bit of the blemish you can see also near the donut here. And that's the center of the mirror roughly. So I will clean it and uh, return it back. 
and that's how the inside of the tube looks now after I remove the telescope mirror this is the mirror of the telescope 12 inch we have already seen I cleaning a 8 inch one this is 10 centimeter bigger than that 4 inch around 4 inch As you can see, the mirror is now there. We have a visitor. Spider. Everybody likes astronomy. Even a spider. Anyway. This is the second towel, and I'm going now to cover it. And take it gently to home with me. Now the telescope is at home and I can start to clean it. Okay, now I am uh, going to wash this for washing first. I have to remove this um, um, holders of the mirror kind of loose actually so the mirror uh, is heavy it was held by some weight so I've just removed it first I will mark somewhere uh, and this is spot something here and something here and so I can put it back the way it was let me do it there is a mark here the electric tape and there is a marker pen sign there also. So I'm now going to remove these uh, screws and safely dismantle the mirror. I have uh, loosened this, uh, removed this screw and loosened this one so it turns. I've decided not to remove them and uh, so this one of them will remain and the other one is removed. And now the mirror hopefully will be able to come out. I've transferred the mirror to the kitchen. And this is the mark that I had. And uh, I will put it in the top. Uh, this top because uh, it has a plastic edge. Hopefully that will be enough. Um, I will be the lukewarm water. I will first uh, rinse it, then I'll add a little bit of very liquid, and then with a little bit uh, up, without applying pressure, I drag some cotton wool over it when it is wet, and just uh, repeat it several times until the mirror is completely clean. Okay, the mirror now is in the sink, and I am pouring water over it. Probably it was better if I could uh, uh, submerge it. Let me, I may try actually remove this bucket, uh, this, remove this and just submerge it. Let me see if I can do that. Yeah, it seems this works. Okay, now I just uh, use the water, tap water, lukewarm tap water to rinse the mirror. I can see the mark which was there is already gone. So that was just probably somebody's ice cream or donut. A little juice of it. Yeah. Okay, I will uh, do this. I will turn the mirror a little bit just to make sure that all the all corners of it is uh, receiving the water. This way I'm loosening the particles, dust, sand, anything that is in this surface to come off. 
This is a 12 inch mirror, 30 centimeter, 300 millimeter, 305 millimeter. So it's quite heavy. I, I can easily say this is around two kilos or more. Already I see some improvement. Uh, so I'll continue. You can see now I put a plastic, uh, the plug there. Uh, and rubber plug and now I'm going to that's really submerge now and I will stop the water now and uh, put some cotton bud just let them soak into the water one there one there and one here one there when they're completely soaked, I would drag them without applying any pressure, just drag them. Kind of brush movement, very gentle. Trying to remove any loose particle that is already loosened by the soap and the water. I just added a few of these drops of this fairy liquid. And that's a washing up liquid right? that you use for cleaning dishes in the kitchen. And now I will start to clean. Uh, what I will do, as you can see, these are completely soaked, so I just gently back on the surface of the mirror. I'm just dragging it, I'm not press, pressing, I'm not applying pressure. I already can see that the mirror is cleaned. That part that had something uh, blemish in, on it, that blemish has gone. So I do here now for this one. Let me just apply a little more water. Again, look for water, of course. Okay, uh, and now I'm just moving the cotton again across gently. I don't apply any pressure and I don't use the same cotton again too much. If there is any grit or sand, I don't want to drag it on the surface of the mirror to cause some scratch, which is undesirable in this situation. I have another piece of cotton here. So I'm really delighted. I thought that center part near the donut, that center, was actually a blemish in the uh, aluminium coating. It's not. It's just something, uh, probably a little ice cream. Somebody having ice cream during the observation. Oh, coffee. Okay, I'll add a little bit more water. Just to make sure that there is enough water submerging the mirror. And gently moving. So. I will continue until the mirror is completely clean. Then uh, I rinse it again and then we go to use some distilled water. Now the mirror is now uh, cleaned and I'm now going to rinse it. As you can see the difference is really clear. I just rinse it with the tap water then at the next stage I will rinse it with the deionized or distilled water that uh, I bought from the whole fork. It's a car, super, uh, car shop, like a supermarket that you buy the things for the car. Uh, it costs probably four, three, four pounds or five pounds, like that. And you get five liters of it. So 
So why, why we are using distilled water? Because this water that we are using, we live in South England. The water has chalk, leaves a lime scale marks. It will uh, leave marks on the, any object. And uh, that's the reason if you want to remove those marks, you have to use something which doesn't have any ions, any lime, limestone, dissolved limestone, any dissolved chemical in it. And that is distilled water, pure water. That's a simple H2O. And that will not leave any mark. Then we we'll let it to dry. I'll show you what I will do. I've rinsed the uh, mirror in the tap water. And I'm not going to use this Holford uh, deionized uh, water, which is practically distilled water. Uh, it's quite uh, useful. You can use it for many uses, as you can see here. For ironing, for car battery, for lava lamps, for steam, and uh, anything else. And it's five liters, it's the ionized water, and I will use it on the mirror. Uh, as you can see, the uh, mirror is cleaned, rinsed in the water. I use this glass just to take the de ionized water and put it over it. Of course, first I'll rinse this glass itself. Okay, this is the mirror and this is the deionized water. Just put it over it. So pushing out any other tap water is just over it. I will use two more and then I'll lift it. Okay, this is the second uh, glass of the deionized water. Careful not to drop anything on the mirror. Okay, the third glass of the deionized water. I'm completely trying to rinse. And as you can see, the mirror is relatively clean now. I'm just taking it now, but completely clean actually. I'm taking it now to the towel and then I will come with the hair dryer to dry. Okay, the mirror is now placed on the towel. It's completely clean. If you see the picture, uh, video, the part of the video that uh, now removed it from the telescope, it was completely dirty. There was marks here and there near the donut center. And now the, all of those have gone. What I will do now, I'll bring a hair dryer, but before that also have a tissue i will use a tissue lint free tissue just to remove any water that is here let's see what we can do as you can see i'm using the hair dryer to evaporate the water at the same time i can use also for the bigger bulk drops i can use the a tissue just to gently absorb this i will show you how what i mean by that gently absorb the moisture So, for example, there is a drop here. Just gently try to absorb that moisture yeah, to the tissue. Okay. They come to it easy. So, I repeat this for all these little drops. I will continue to do this. Okay, as you can see, the mirror is now cleaned. It's shiny. Um, mirrors over time, you know, degrade anyway. And uh, there is some effect of it anyway. You cannot avoid that. But generally, it's in better condition than it was before cleaning it. And uh, yeah, hopefully it will serve another 10, 20 years. And then probably will be recorded. Now I'm going to put it back in the mirror cell. I want to show you that this is the mirror and how thick it is. This is yeah, more than one inch. It's around three centimeter. And the back of it is this. So, quite chunky piece of glass. 
and this is the front page. As you can see, it's clean, lovely. As you can see, the mirror is now back. That's the arrow that I had. That's the mark. I have to rotate it slightly because this edge of the arrow was at this point. So first I will turn this, put it in here. Then I will slightly turn this mirror this way. Okay, I have now adjusted the arrow exactly on the same spot that it was. That is important because you have to collimate it the way that it was. Putting the first of the screws that I removed and gently turning it on. And I will do this for all the three supports. What accidental damage, I just uh, tighten the screws by hand as much as I can. Then for the parts that I cannot really, uh, is too tight, then I will use the screwdriver. Just to avoid the, any accidental damage. So I do all this for all these screws. I use the screwdriver and uh, I hold the tip in my hand and with the other hand I just turn the screwdriver and tighten them. So it's back the way it was. Now uh, I just use the air blower just to blow the any dust that is left over it when I was working on it. And then probably uh, because I have to transfer it to the tube and the tube is not in this place. I will uh, use a uh, cling film on top of it just to make sure that there is no accidental you know damage or dirt falling on it I just use this air blower um, and loose particles will be removed and I have a very soft brush also here if I see anything that is loose I can remove Tiny blemishes like this one doesn't affect the performance, I just leave them. That's it, the mirror is done now. It's ready for the next stage, which is ins installing it on the tube. Dapsonian, 12 inch, 30 centimeter, 305 millimeter mirror. Telescope mirror. Now covered half of the mirror with the cling film, I will cover the other half with the cling film also. I have now covered the mirror thoroughly in the cling film and it's ready for transport. I have now covered the mirror in the cling film thoroughly and is ready to be covered in the towel and transferred to the uh, optical tube assembly and installed there. Cover it now with the towel until later that I'll transfer it to the tube. So from towel to the towel. I'm carrying the mirror to where it should be installed. It is now here, as you can see, and it's absolutely clean. It's like new. Now I'm going to bring the tube and install the mirror so it was a good idea to actually cover it with a um, cling film so I have covered the end part of the uh, mirror with this plastic bag as you can see here and I'm now going to install it so what you see is the second mirror these are the six screws this is a screwdriver the mirror and the optical tube assembly so I'm going to install it into that let's go and see what we can and I'm going to put it exactly the same screw which is here marked by that tiny scratch and the similar scratch in the uh, mirror cell that you can see again here and first 
I will remove the screws, bring the screws. I remove one of them. This is the screw. This is the screw. And I'm now going to remove this cover. Look at this mirror. Amazing quality. Absolutely clean. I'm going to put it now exactly on the uh, same spot and position. Okay, this is the mirror cell, standing freely now. It's free standing. There is no screw yet there. I'm going now to put the screw. First the screw, the marks are there. And I'm going to put it now inside that. Okay, now I'm putting the screw in. And that's the first screw. I have five more to do. I watch her 12 inch, 300, uh, 5 millimeter telescope is now washed, uh, cleaned, and uh, put back in his mirror cell and at the bottom of the optical tube assembly, ready to go on the mounting crater. Dobsonian telescope, massive. This is the maximum that you can have as a telescope and yet be uh, movable and portable. 14 inch one is too big, too, too heavy to carry on. To use without any single handed uh, or with any kind of equipment, trolley like sack truck or something like that. Now I have uh, put the telescope inside the cradle and this knob which is a tension handle it be on the side which is of a sky watcher return and if you turn you will see the eyepiece holder so the eyepiece itself will be in this side it's easy now to move and adjust the tension so this is the way it should be when you look eyepiece tension bar and the eyepiece holder if you put it the other way around that is wrong you cannot move it uh, in a correct way I've extended the telescope to its full height and this is around one and a half meter high now. I'll put the eyepiece and just we'll have a first light with this. Um, I have to collimate it of course and that is another story. When you move the telescope no matter what you do it has to be collimated. Right. I remove the um, cover. You can see inside the mirror. You can see the mirror uh, for making sure that the telescope stays in position. You have to adjust the tension on this, but this tension bar. Now let us look through the secondary mirror. Okay. Oh, collimation is not bad actually. A little bit off center, but. Not that bad. Oh, well, I'm not disappointed actually. It does look good. Yes, it needs a slight collimation, but beyond that, that that's looks good. So I'm using now without eyepiece. I can just show you that this is not eyepiece here. Beautiful mirror, beautiful telescope like new just cleaned it
Thank you.